Hello, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about SCCM endpoint protection, how to install it, how to configure it, and manage those devices. Now the management of those devices I may save for a second video because there's a lot involved. So we need to add an endpoint protection role and then we need to configure some policies and see um, and then the agents will, the endpoint protection agents will start to deploy to the other machine. And also you can create automatic deployment roles to keep those DAP files updated. So with that let's get started. So today is all about the endpoint protection. So I'm here on my um, primary site server. Now again, this is a lab environment, so you may want to create a separate server um, and add your endpoint protection on that server, but this is a small lab environment, but this kind of gives you the uh, what you need to do to install and configure endpoint protection. So with that, uh, let's just take a look over at the client settings first before we get started. And um, now as you can see, it's grayed out because I don't have the role installed. So we have to install the role first before we can start adding some, some components, uh, some policies around that. So with that, we're going to go to the administration tab. We're going to expand that. We're going to go ahead and create a site system server. So this time we're going to put this on, uh, let's see. I think I'll just put on my primary. I mean, it's a small lab environment, so it should be fine. But in an enterprise environment, I would be creating a separate server and put uh, use that server as the endpoint protection. So we go next. Okay. Oh, I know what I need to do. Okay, here. Add. So because it's already there, I need to add. Uh, otherwise, you'd be creating and then adding it to the other uh, server. So since I already have that created, we're just going to add a role. So in this case, we're going to add the endpoint protection right there. And so it will automatically deploy the up but I'll show you how that, that works shortly once we get that added. So that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and add that role. Next. That's fine. License terms. Yep, that's fine. Basic membership. Next. Now this will take a, a little bit of time to configure, so I'm going to pause the video and when, I come, when it's finished, uh, we'll come back. Alright, so we're back. So um, if you want to monitor the deployment, the log file is uh, mpsetup.log. And it'll go through and start uh, checking everything and just going through the role endpoint protection. And there's your, um, there's your SEP installer so it does all this and we have a success so that's good so we got an exit code so now we can go in here now in the um, access and compliance you'll see anti-malware policies so first before we can do that let's go check the administration client settings we're going to go in here and um, endpoint protection now we can see that now, even though the role's installed, we still need to install the agents. So right now everything's set to no, so we need to turn that on first before we can actually install or configure any policies around that. So the first thing we'll do is say yes. We want to add that. Um, then we want to install the protection uh, on the computers, yes. Uh, and then we want to allow uh, client installation Outside uh, maintenance window, no. So if you guys have a maintenance window type situation, it will not install unless there's a maintenance window, which is fine. Um, so I'm gonna leave the default there. Um, you may, you know, in my lab, I can change that to yes, but I'll just leave it default. Uh, devices with the endpoint protection client, uh, we start, yes. And then, so these are, these are the default settings. So I'm kind of gonna leave these default setting as is. Um, so now that once we get that, enable then it'll start to push out the um, endpoint protection agent once the agent gets out there then we can define the policy but what, what we can do while we're kind of waiting for that to happen so in here you go to access and compliance anti uh, malware policies and then you're going to go in here and then these are all of the different settings that you can configure so um uh, you can run a quick scan on client computers, no or yes, depending on your SecOps policy. They may have certain policies uh, for this. 
So I'm going to, because this is a lab environment, I'm going to um, have most of these set to default. Uh, one, I don't have exchange or email or anything, so I'll probably turn all of that off. But I just kind of want to walk through these policies real quick. Uh, so basically, a quick scan, um, you know, what, what time you want to do that, that's fine. Um, no, I don't really want to do a daily, I mean, it's just a lab environment. Um, so as you turn these things on, you know, it'll, it'll cause some kind of, uh, you know, you can also limit the CPU usage here so we can, you know, monitor. So this is fine. And you have scan settings. Uh, so I don't, I'm not going to scan an email because I don't have any. Now you, now you can change any of these settings you want. So this is where you would go. I'm going to leave everything default. Um, so, um, I'm not going to scan archives. I don't really care about that. So um, the default actions, uh, severe. We're going to just quarantine, quarantine, and then we're just going to allow. Um, so these are, you can, you can, you can d remove the file, uh, but it's probably a good idea to quarantine. Um, maybe for severe, I'll, I may go and remove, you know, which is fine. But you can change these settings however you, or you can just do recommended, which is basically, um, so, or you can quarantine. So what, you can do whatever you want here. Um, Real-time protection, we're going to go yes. Um, you know, these are, these are default settings, but again, you can go and change any of these things as you, as you see fit in your organization. Um, exclusion, so this is to exclude any, um, you know, folders or files that need to be excluded from the real-time scanning that may cause some issues. And um, every vendor will have their own documentation of what needs to be excluded in terms of the extensions or files or what have you. Uh, but I'm going to leave this default because, again, this is just a lab environment, so I don't have any things that you really need to exclude. Um, and then the advanced section goes through some of the advanced settings here. Again, um, uh, you can create a system restart before it's clean. Uh, you know, no, you can disable your interface. Uh, you can, I say no, just because I, I like to have that there, but again, you may turn that off in your environment. So you can actually go through these settings and turn them on based on what you want turned on. But again, I'm just going to leave all these to default for now. And then for the updates, um, I'm going to go ahead and ha add that here just in case. Now, typically, what happens in the up uh, when you when it does the DAP file updates, it does the you can you, you can these are four ways that you can update those DAP files. You can do Config Manager. Now, oftentimes you'll have to use that if they have internet turned off on your clients or your servers or what have you. Uh, so you only have the Config Manager to push them out. Um, you can also do it through WSUS. Um, you can also do it through my, uh, updates the internet. Um, so I'm going to just leave the four on there. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll do that later if I need to, but no, I'm going to leave those for them. But you can turn these other ones off and just only use Config Manager, and I can show you how to do that if, you, if that's the case for you. But I'm going to leave the default there. Um, and then if, I'm, if I did select the UNC path, then I would have to put the path where those, those files are, but I'm not going to do that here. But there may be some cases where you have to do that. Um, and that's basically it. So those are the policies. So when the agent gets installed on these machines, it will actually get all of these policies. So I'm going to pause this video um, and then we'll come back when we got some agents out there. Okay, so to monitor the deployments, we're going to go over to monitoring, security, and then there's your endpoint protection status. You click on this. Uh, right now it says total devices in this collection. And it'll kind of give you a real-time endpoint protection agent not installed, so we're still waiting on that. So eventually, once they check in, they should start getting the agents installed. Uh, so at least it's identified that there are five devices in my... Uh, so I can click on this, and it'll kind of take me to... Uh, right now, it's not it's unmanaged, so we still got to wait for the agents to get installed. Um, and then, of course, you have your malware detected thing, which, you know, eventually it'll... Um, you know, take us to that. Uh, so right now we ha it's going to go to all desktop services. You can always change or whatever collection you want to, you know, check on. Um, so right now, um, so it's just going to take some time. So once uh, I get one of the agents installed, let's go with one of the desktop computers and see. Let's go to. I'm going to go to. Um, let's see. Go ahead, pause this. 
All right, so I'm going to um, go ahead and create a um, Windows Defender firewall policy. And so we're going to do configure for the domain um, just for now. Uh, so we're going to say no for a block. We're going to say uh, yes. Okay, so block and current connections for no, yes. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do yes for all the, uh, no, we're just going to do all of these are on the domain, so, um, well, let's just put not configured. All right, that's what I'm going to do, and that's it. That way it allows all the incoming traffic to come in, because I don't want it to stop um, the SCCM components to work. So... I went ahead and do that. So now I'm going to have, so now it's not deployed yet. So I still need to deploy that. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy to all systems. And let's just do one day. That's fine. Simple schedule. And that's it. And so we got your antivirus policy and we have the uh, Windows Defender policy. And the reason I did that is because if you have an environment that has Windows Firewall disabled, it's, it's not going to like that. It's going to want you to turn it on, uh, which is fine. We can do that. I mean, it's a lab environment. Um, so then it makes us a little bit happy. And then, then you have, now it looks like this. So um, again, that's basically the basic setup of your um, endpoint protection. And again, you go to the um, monitoring, just to kind of recap a little bit. And here's your, eventually once you get, uh, it'll, it'll start to, right now it says not installed yet, but it will get installed. You have your section here where it, um, you know, you run your summarization, it'll tell you any malware that is detected on these machines. Um, and again, you have your policy here that you can configure and there are multiple things you can set. And, um, um, so that's how you set up and configure. Now the next segment, once we get those to, uh, installed, I'm going to walk you through how to automatically deploy those updates, uh, for the endpoint protection. So I'll be right back with that one. Okay. So when the agent gets installed, this is what it's going to look like. So I have this already on my primary site server. You'll see the icon here. Now, again, you can turn that off if you want. Um, but this shows that it's, uh, endpoint protection is on, it's up to date. The updates, the history, the settings. Uh, now, of course, they can't. The user can't change any of this because we disabled that feature. But this is basically the endpoint protection. Um, and so, to keep those um, uh, definitions up to date, we're going to need to go ahead and create an automatic deployment rule for that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So one of the things that you want to do in the WSUS, in your catalog, you want to make sure that you have, uh, so let's go over to um, site servers, let's go over to components, soft, yep, self update point. And then when you go to classifications, you're going to want to make sure you have definition updates, uh, feature packs enabled and then when you go to product you want to make sure you have um, your endpoint protection turned on and um, and then there's the forefront for the older devices but I don't have any old devices so just make sure you have that enabled once you have that once you do synchronization it'll automatically pull over those definition updates um, so now what you want to do is um, Uh, that's just uh, one moment. All right, so when you, want, you want to go to software update, you want to go to automatic deployment rules. This will automatically deploy the uh, definition update. So I'm just going to call this um, definition update. Definition update. And we're going to do um, all systems, or you can do whatever systems you want.
So we're going to do product, definition updates. There you go. Uh, definition updates, which is what we want. Um, next. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do client local time to get all my stuff. Um, let's just do one day. So every day it's, it's configured. Let's do one hour. I'm going to do one hour for my uh, environment. Uh, okay, I'm going to do that. We can probably suppress the restart the service if you want to, um, so it doesn't force the um, install of those. So I'm going to do that. And then, um, okay. call it definition updates we'll call updates and we create a folder real quick Speech points. Make sure that's. And there you go. Now I've created an automatic deployment rule for definition updates. So, and that's basically all you have to do. And then it's just a matter of just monitoring the deployments and making sure those definitions get updated. And that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, uh, you want to know more, um, just let me know in the comment section below. Again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. There's going to be a lot more coming. Uh, the next video is going to probably be about application catalog and how to um, apply those uh, applications to the application catalog. At any rate, um, again, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.